Generation Adidas Cup. It is the top youth competition in North America. Major League Soccer hosting a number of international teams. We are excited to be with you here on the stream. David Goss and Bobby Warshaw fieldside to join you for the rest of this match as well as many more from Frisco, Texas at the Toyota Soccer Center. So you see these two teams, a last moment of preparation as they get ready to face off the Seattle Sounders. Come into this one to kick off group stage play on the first day of competition, kicking off play here in Group A, facing off against Matsumoto Yamaga FC out of Nagano, Japan. Should be a fun one between these two teams. Bobby, we're gonna get to starting lineups in a moment, but let's talk big picture first. For these two sides, first game of the competition for this team coming from Japan. You've never played here in the United States against an American team before. Coming in really out of nowhere, and Seattle uh, on the same for the flip side. You've not played a Japanese club in your past, just 17 years old, most of these kids. How do they adjust? How do they handle these early moments? Yeah, David, I've done this as a 16, 17-year-old, going to a new country, playing a team in a different continent. And early in this game, beginning of the tournament, they're actually not going to be telling themselves that much. There won't be a big message from the coaching staff. It really will be go out and enjoy it. Go out and enjoy this experience in a new place, leaving your comfort zone. If anything from the coaching staff, it might be a little bit, don't get too excited. Try and stay a little compact, a little reserved in the first five, 10 minutes so that your emotions don't get the, the best of you. And for Seattle, playing a team from Japan, which is something they don't do very often, if ever, they too have to realize for the first five minutes, get a feel for the team, but also Japanese soccer is often very different than what we're used to in North America in that you won't see the Japanese team let the ball leave the ground very often. It's very technical. The ball stays on the ground. They're all tidy, neat players with the ball at their feet. So it'll be about Seattle getting used to that early on and starting to solve the problems during the game. The Seattle Sounders just missing out on qualifying for the Champions Division. Here, one of the favorites in the Premier Division getting ready to kick off their 2018 competition as the Sounders get us going, wearing their white jersey going right to left here. Excuse me, left to right on your broadcast. And facing off for the first time ever, I would have to assume, against Matsumoto Yamaga. Their first opportunity to play in America first team playing in the J2 division, one of the best academies though, in all of Japan. We've already seen a couple games action today and we'll get you scores as we go through for this team, for these two teams, the other two teams in their group, the New England Revolution and the Montreal Impact facing off right now on the other field, just beginning their second half. So we'll update you as soon as we get scores to see what, how this group rounds out. And uh, David, to provide some names for some people to watch if they're watching on the broadcast right now, for Seattle, number 55 on the right wing, Ray Serrano. And an early goal. And an incredible start here. The perfect way to get it going. We mentioned the nerves maybe coming and playing in a new country. Matsumoto Yamaga FC with a goal just minutes into play and Seattle Sounders now starting behind. And David, we talked at the start about Seattle maybe need to stay compact, stay reserved for the opening five or 10 minutes and they don't. They let them in between their lines and put a beautiful finish. Left foot, curler to the back post. Clearly not nervous at all to be playing in a new situation out of their comfort zone. So you look at this Seattle back line, Robert Haraka in goal, Montana, Bernie, Malone, and Drought, the back line going right to left. It's gonna be a 4-2-3-1 for Seattle. They're holding midfielders, number 28, Joshua Atencio, who's a US Youth International, and alongside him, Peter Kingston in midfield, and attacking three right to left, Ray Serrano, who Bobby mentioned, number 55, Daniel Robles, the number 10, and Marlon Vargas on the left side. And up top, 
Asriel Gonzalez, a young player for this team, but a big time goal scorer in USDA play for them. Looked like it was gonna be a foul. We continue play. Another collision here. When you look at this Matsumoto Yamaga FC team, they've got Suki Muto in goal, Kaito Sekijima at right back, Kai Yamazaki at center back alongside Ukuma Mutsuzaki at left back, Haruka Mashima across that back four in a 4 3 3. A center midfield of Daiki Higuchi, Ise Tanaka, and Sosh Taikui. And then an attacking front three of Honda, Nakamura, and Sutsu to spearhead this squad. Bobby, this is a Seattle team. I mentioned just off the top that a lot of people really like under Mark Nichols. We feel like it could be a competitive team, but now you start out this game down 1-0. You do, David, and that can often go one of two ways. It can either rattle you from the start and you really never get your bearings, you never get it back together, or two, it can add a jolt to say, all right, now we're alive, now we're awake. We talked about the nerves at the opening of the broadcast, but once you give up that early goal, those nerves go out the window. It really makes you focus, it makes you get back to just being on the field and being present, and it appears from this response, we saw Seattle almost getting behind there, it's the latter. You can tell already they're more energetic, they're, more, they're communicating more than they did in the opening two minutes, I always call it poking the dragon. You have to be wary about poking a dragon early because sometimes teams come out with a little malaise, a little nerves, and once you score early, as the Japanese squad did, it makes Seattle refocus. Well, this Japanese squad coming in here, their first opportunity to play in the United States. It's gonna go down as a third minute goal for the center forward, Tsutsi. A big moment for this team. In a short tournament like this, three games, 70 minute games, 35 minute halves. An early goal, an early lucky play, or good bounce could be a big difference in the way a group lines up. Big collision there as Malone colliding with the attacker. This ball still alive on the top of the box, flicked over the goalkeeper and hits the crossbar, still in play for Seattle and finally cleared. Lovely skill there on the chip. Seems like the wind carried that, held it up a little longer. Otherwise, it would have been great execution. It was Robles coming in from midfield with that chip. And as Bobby said, he just couldn't get it to die quick enough to sneak in that goal. A heavy wind here at Toyota Soccer Center. This wind blowing from left to right behind the Matsumoto goal towards Seattle in this first half. We've seen it affect a lot of the early games here. David, when I talked to people about this Sounders U17 team, they all spoke very highly. They said it was surprising to see them finish out of the top three in the West so they didn't qualify for the Champions Division because they thought they really were one of the best teams in the country. One of the better passing, possession, both attacking and defending teams. And you look at this team, I mentioned a Tensio, a USU 17 that was just with them. They have a player in Christian Kuntz who's not starting in this game, who played seven games last year with Seattle Sounders too, in USL, an option at center back or left back for this team. Azriel Gonzalez, we mentioned up top, who has already signed a professional contract. So he's another player who can play in that USL setup. And Bobby, you mentioned Ray Serrano, probably the star of this team. Yeah, absolutely. And Serrano, from what we hear from people, and going back and watching his tape, not only a star player, but also very humble in the way he approaches the game. One thing we'll talk about this week are the star players and the way they approach the game. Do they take it easy because they're the best player? Do they take it easy because they're used to playing with the first team of the USL team? And that's not a concern with Serrano, who shows up, and the word that many observers use is humility. Plays with humility every single game. David, another player I'm looking forward to watching is Vargas for Seattle. Starting on the left wing today, who on any different given day can be also be the best player for the Sounders. A little more up and down than Serrano, 
doesn't show up as ready to play some days, but on his best day can dominate a game. And Vargas, one of the higher rated players on this team, had 14 goals with their USDA team, U16, U17. And as you mentioned, has that up and down ability, but Top Draw Soccer has him rated as one of the top 20 players in his class. Right now, Vargas out on that left wing, a part of what we think will be a very dangerous attack for Seattle, but so far you have to say, Bobby, Matsumoto, Yamaga, very comfortable to start this game. They really are, but that's generally the way our Japanese teams like to play. They look, they, they tend to be comfortable. It's when they try and get behind. But this is a nice challenge. We talk about these MLS teams playing new clubs and new cultures, and that's one thing that Seattle needs to do. It's going to be tougher to rattle this opposition today. The Seattle team, sorry. No, here in this moment, they've got a chance to block them in. We'll look at Seattle shift over, try and get numbers around the ball, try and pin them to the side. But against a team as technical as they're playing today, it's going to be harder. The margin for error is going to be smaller, but they did a nice job there. The Seattle team coming into this competition, as we mentioned, a lot of people considering them one of the better squads in the MLS setup, coming in third, fourth place, excuse me, in Western qualifying behind Sporting KC, the LA Galaxy, and then just getting nipped by the Portland Timbers. Ooh, that had to hurt. Had to hurt for them, the Pacific Northwest. Seattle ended qualifying with a plus six goal differential on 10 points. Portland, a plus one goal differential on 11 points. That was how thin the margin was, and we'll see the Timbers later on in the Champions Division as we've got three more broadcasts coming for you later on today. We've got a, some real special ones here across MLS Twitter and YouTube channel. We've got Real Madrid sporting KC. We've got Atletico Paranaense out of Brazil versus NYCFC who last year won the Premier Division in their first year as an academy team and this year are in the Champions Division after qualifying out of the East and then Atlanta United bringing in a few players who also have professional contracts facing off against Ecuadorian opposition and Independiente de Valle. So we'll have all three of those broadcast for you as we move along. A third minute goal for Matsumoto Yamaga. The difference right now, trying to break it open even wider. And it looked like right there, Takechi coming out of his midfield position, couldn't just catch that one. David, you know what I'm watching for from the Sounders right now? It's that we talk a lot about improving the level of American soccer and getting to be better passers and more comfortable on the ball. But what happens in a game like this, where you're playing a team whose entire ethos, everything about their development in their soccer country for years and years has been passing and comfort on the ball? Can the Sounders outmatch them on that? They have to make a decision. Is this a time when we really put ourselves to the test or do we problem solve and we say, hey, we're not going to outpass. We're not going to be better in tight spots in our opposition. And we have to find our competitive advantage on a given day. And so, what is it? Is it one-on-one -on -one play? Is it individual play? Is it balls in the air? We've already seen them try and play a few diagonals from center backs out forward. We've already seen Atencio break the lines with passes and make their game a little more direct than they sometimes play in the academy game. And it's a nice challenge for these 17-year-olds because as much as important as to improve your passing and dribbling as you get older, those are also parts of development. That's solving those problems on the field. That's Vargas that gets dropped, dragged down. So free kick coming here for Seattle. You see Malone, Atencio, and Bernie, the size for this team pushing forward. Seattle pushing everyone up. Matsumoto, Yamaga with all 11 players back to mark on this one. And with the win, David, don't be surprised to them whip one as hard as they can at that back post. Put the goalie in a tough spot with both the whip and pace of the ball along with the win carrying it forward. It looks like Robles and Kingston standing over this one. Robles with the left foot, Kingston the right foot. Our head official, Pierre-Luc Laarriere, getting things set. It's cleared away. You could see the ball roll just a touch before he took that. The wind got a hold of it.
day one of Group A of the 2018 generation Adidas Cup competition. Seattle Sounders and Japanese opposition Matsumoto Yamaga FC facing off here. The group alongside New England Revolution and the Montreal Impact. The winner of each group will move into the semifinals, which will be played up at the big stadium, Toyota Stadium, just down the road. Loading ball, handled well in the end by Haraka. I like how Malone is looking upfield. He's not watching the goalie. Even as the ball is traveling to him, getting rolled, he's still looking upfield, looking at his options. Kingston here dropping deep to pick up the ball. A nice rotation taking place between Kingston and Atencia right now. One coming to get the ball, one filling the space but just good organization on the other side. Oh, look at that center back, showing some skill. Gonzalez pushes it wide for Vargas. Back into the path of Gonzalez, who curls it in onside and makes it 1-1. Fantastic goal. It started with Malone both winning the ball back and getting out of pressure. Of and then it's about two good players it. making a play. Fantastic run by Gonzalez to peel off, to stay onside, to provide a nice angle, and then composure in front of goal. Once again, inside of the foot, car curled far post. Made a difficult finish look easy. Bobby, you mentioned this Matsumoto team comfortable in possession. If you're Seattle, how do you find a different way to break them down? They're an opportunity to get out on the break. Gonzalez and Vargas, who we'd heard a lot about, showing off and being able to connect for that goal. Yeah, and we talk about possession a lot, right? But sometimes possession is just to kind of make your heart happy. You're not playing possession to score goals. You're playing possession to feel good, and you understand that your goals are gonna come from those transition moments that just happened. But because you've had been on the ball, because you've gotten touches, because you feel good, you're more efficient and you're sharper in those transition moments. So I don't mind what Seattle has done, getting on the ball early, but really trying to be efficient when they can counter like that. Although for some teams, possession is defense, right? Right. There's Having a lot of ways ball. to use possession. And I like how Seattle used it there, saying, listen, we might not be breaking them down, but we're building towards something. Matsumoto struggling to get on the ball since their early goal from this man in Tsutsi. It was a third-minute strike. Seattle doesn't go reeling though. They stayed level-headed. They've controlled most of the possession since that moment and they finally got the goal through Gonzalez. It was a fantastic response from Seattle. And of course the goal, the simplest part to analyze, but Gonzalez has the ball come from behind him, steadies his feet, seeing it late and opens up his hips to finish the far post. You gotta like that. Yeah, young striker. absolutely fantastic. The little details of that, the movement, the body posture, picking up his head, looking where the goalie was, seeing that he had already slid down, just popping it over him to that far post. Really impressive finish from Gonzalez. And we have to say, one of the star players for Seattle, Chavez, who was their starting center forward, not here at this competition for health reasons. So Gonzalez, who's played out wide, played in a two-man setup up top, now sliding in as that center forward. A good start for him to this tournament. Good confidence for the young man. And we can clearly see Seattle making it a point to try and get behind, to play these long diagonals, either to the wide areas or to wide players running behind. David, you asked, how do you combat a team like Matsumoto sitting deep, staying compact, tidy on the ball? Seattle has made it a point to try and get behind them and make the game a little more direct. Gonzalez showing ability on the ball in tight areas again. Connor Drought getting forward. He's able to at least win a corner kick for his squad. It looks like Kingston will come up to take it. The big bodies moving forward once again for these Seattle Sounders U17 team. We can see the Seattle the Sounders at the top of the box. They've split to either side of the D. They've got two big bodies on the far side of the D at the top of the box, two on the near side. Watch for them to switch, perhaps. 
Kingston drives it in right on goal. It's still alive, cleared off the line and back out for a corner kick. A recovery at the last second from Muto. The goalkeeper getting a little bit of help and Seattle dangerous here on the corner kick. And they ended up not switching, David. They stayed. They acted like they were going to cross. They cut back. The guys on the near side end up going to the near post. It created confusion. The ball got through and the players darting towards the far post. So it looks like now Robles will take it. Some left-footed service, he gets help out there from Serrano. Now the cross comes in, and then back in at the top of the box, still alive, a second chance, and Serrano rips it home. Fantastic technique from Serrano. You could see how he kept his body over it. He chest, kept his chest over the ball. Good center of gravity, didn't swing too hard. So often players try and crush that, and we see it go into row Z. But Serrano kept his body compact, kept his swing compact, and we saw the shot stay low and go under the goalkeeper. So the short corner, it was headed back into the mix by Blake Malone, the left center back. Serrano wide open there, picking it up and finishing. And just one minute apart, these two goals put together. Seattle turning around from that early deficit right now to snag a one goal lead here 20 minutes in to this opening half. David, I told you, you can't poke the dragon so early. I don't know that not scoring is a good idea. Well, apparently it's <laughs> not. <laughs> you think that, but sometimes it's better to buy your time, especially where you're on the road like this. Bobby, what have you seen, though, from Matsumoto since the goal? They haven't had a lot of possession. Yeah, not much. They really made their, their game plan at that point to sit deep and try and weather the storm that was about to come at them, and they couldn't. It'll be fun now to see how this group of players responds. We talked about how will Seattle respond going down early. Well, now it's on Matsumoto to do the same. Talk about a swing in emotion from being up one nothing early to now being be behind. Easily out and taken there by Haraka. Malone looking up again before he gets the ball like that. And we've seen... What's interesting, I think, Bobby, a mix of players in that Seattle midfield drop deep to pick that ball up the center backs. We see a Tencio there. Mm -hmm. We've seen Kingston and Robles do it as well. This is Kingston now on the ball. And what they're trying to do through that is open up lanes. Malone looking to hit the cross field ball towards Serrano. That one falls to the feet of Higuchi. Finally cleared out. That's a fine foul by Burnley. He was beaten. He took the right foul the right way in an okay area. A smart professional move from the Seattle center back. Of course, a few of these Seattle players finally getting a chance to play some professional soccer, whether on loan to the USL team or, as I mentioned, a few of them on professional contracts. A whole new part of the US youth and Canadian soccer setup now. As Malone goes down, he won the header. It's the fourth or fifth header he's gone up and won, either from the defensive zone or up on an attacking set piece. Yeah, he picked up an assist, but I think you have to say he's been arguably the best player on the field so far for Seattle, especially the way this game started, to have a center back that helps you steady things. As we've talked to scouts in advance of this tournament, David, one thing that they mention are what are the skills that are transferable? Serrano, Vargas, very good players. But how much can you trust a 17-year-old attacker translating? Oh, wow. <laughs> Bobby has a I am sorry, right Serrano. Now. I apologize for anything I was about to say. Right there. That's Ray Serrano, one of the stars coming into this competition. But, David, the point that, they, that the scouts make about Malone is that his skill set translates well into being a professional center back. His strength, his ability in the air, his passing ability. Serrano they... now on the ball once again. Pushing forward the youngest signing in Sounders history. So that's why people around the Sounders organization are very high in Malone right now. And they could use some center backs right now, especially some young and the ones. One, the name that I heard tossed around was Chad Marshall. And perhaps he doesn't have the, the upside that Chad Marshall does, but the same kind of player you trust what he will bring every day because he's just a solid in a lot of ways. Serrano made his USL debut last week, 13 minutes in the USL opener. 
He was with the USU 17s last month alongside Atencio at a Graham Washington. Had 16 goals in USDA play last season for this Sounder squad. Of course, at Generation Adidas Cup, this is the top competition for these youth academies. So sometimes you see a mix of players. And a chance to dribble forward here for the first time. Cross is blocked from Montana. Second look at it, Vargas takes too long. And Matsumoto comes away with it. I like Seattle's pressing right there. Vargas gave it away, but immediately reacted to try and win it back. That's just as important as anything you can create with your feet. Because in that exact moment, you can win it back and get another opportunity. I like that reaction from the Seattle attackers. Enrique Montana pushing forward there the first time. We've seen him really get into the attack. But Bobby, these two Seattle fullbacks, it seems like are starting to play higher and higher as his first half drags along. Just approaching 25 minutes played here. These are 35 minute halves, 70 minute games. If tied, we go directly to penalty kicks. Three points for a win, two points for a PK win, and one point for a penalty kick loss. Montana up to the feet of Serrano. Starting to really enjoy this game. Starting to find some touches. Malone with some space to work into. Good decision. Seattle probing now. They're not in a rush to get goals. At this point, you've got to pick your passes. Go side to side. Make Matsumoto work. When you don't need to score in a moment like this, you can buy your time and wait for the defense to get tired or lose focus, and then you go through them. Bobby Matsumoto right now trailing 2-1. to one. They've got all 11 players in their own final third defensively. They've got to find a way to get back into this game to get some possession. And it's still early for them. They shouldn't, nor should they feel a need to go get the ball. Turnover in a dangerous area. Vargas trying to restart the attack. Drought down the wing. One-on-one -on -one now for Gonzalez. He gets it to the box. His shot is blocked. And it started with the counter press again. Even though they had given the ball away, they were in a spot where they could go get it back immediately, and they did just that. Matsumoto Yamaga looking to counter. Up the left wing for Nakamura. Nakamura now cuts in on his right foot, takes the shot, easily handled by Roberto Haraka. Impressive hold there, David, with the ball skipping, a little top spin on it. That's the kind of ball that pops off a goalie's chest right out into the middle. So an important and impressive save, even though it looks simple. Seattle Sounders. And if we look at this play now, Matsumoto is step 10, 15 yards higher to get the ball. And this is what happens when you keep possession. The opposition gets impatient. They feel a need to go get it. So even though they didn't break him down last time, here we see the gap starting to open up and they can go through the lanes because they've pulled Matsumoto out. This is how possession works from play to play. It doesn't always have to be that exact instant. Serrano battling down that right side. Montana able to come up and help, but the free kick will go against him. Right now, though, Seattle controlling the pace of play in this game. Putting themselves in a strong position. Early favorites, as we said, coming into this one. They concede three minutes in. And they're able to rebound through two of their star players in Gonzalez and Serrano. David, what we've already seen from the Sounders is the variety with which they play. They scored on a counter. But when they win the ball, they try and build up. As soon as they lose it, they go and win it back. They've scored on a set piece. When we look at the breakdown of their goals from their set from their games all season, over 20 games, a lot of teams have a very clear way they like to play, but not the Sounders team. They get about 15% of their goals in four different ways, you know, with the last spread throughout various types. But they score equal numbers from set pieces, from counters, and from build-up play. So it's no surprise they've gotten their goals this way today. Early ball trying to find Drought, making the run up the left side. Mark Nichols, the head coach for this U17 squad and academy director, trying to build an individual style from top to bottom in this Sounders Academy, especially with the advent of Sounders 2 now playing in Tacoma. 
A chance to have a tip of that pyramid for these young players on their roadway, hopefully, to the MLS squad. Of course, we see Bawana at the MLS level coming in as a homegrown this season, getting some early minutes. Henry Wingo with an assist against Chivas out of the academy. Jordan Morris. I've heard of him. I mean, he did have a full a few years at Stanford, <laughs> which some might say is unfair these Bobby days. Finds a way to get Stanford involved. You in you teed me up. Yeah, that's true. Matsumoto Yamaga playing in the Japanese second division right now. Currently in 20th place, but just early on, five games into the season as their first team. Last year finished eighth, just outside the playoff spots. They've had one year ever where they've been in the J-League first division. Known as one of the better academies throughout Japan. Corner kick played in on the near post. It's the fourth corner kick we've seen from the Sounders and the fourth set piece play they've run. Early win there by Matsuzaki. It goes down under the foul. This Seattle team's adjusted well here. Bobby, final five minutes of this first half. What do you want to see from this team with a lead now? David, we just called the Houston versus Monterey game. In the first half, Houston played well, but we kept saying you've got to take advantage of your moments when you have the other team on the ropes, and it feels like it's the same thing for Seattle right now. They've had the better of this half. They've been the better team, but can they make sure that they take full advantage of that? So it's not a one-goal game. Going to the second half where anything can happen, the tide can turn. Can they fully put the other team under right now with another goal? And for Matsumoto Yamaga, there's going to be a lot to talk about at halftime. The question for them has to be, as dangerously, but finally Haraka is able to get that one under control. How can they move their lineup a little bit, Bobby? How can they get some possession in this game? How can they move Seattle's back line? Because right now their only opportunities have just been direct balls, into the feet of the center forward, Takayuki Tsutse, and him trying to break down two or three players. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this Matsumoto team come out in a different style with a different approach in the second half. As we said, just like it's new for the Seattle Sounders to play a Japanese team, it's new for a Japanese team to be here in Frisco, Texas on a chilly, windy day. So it doesn't surprise me that they come out in the first half and they play very conservative. They've sat deep, they've tried to play a little direct, they've tried to limit the Sounders' chances. But then the second half, they'll say, all right, we have our stuff together. We feel a little more comfortable. Let's go get the game. So don't be surprised to see Matsumoto come out with a little more aggressiveness in the second half. Of course, this being a FIFA break, a few of the teams here are missing players for youth international competition. Uh, they like Galaxy and Yuli Nunez playing with the USU 20s. A few players across the board. This team as well has one player in Australia right now playing with the Japanese youth team one of their star players a good chance to break in now though early shot Haraka makes the save Tsutsi looking for his second goal of the game Bobby maybe shot a little bit early there yeah it felt like he was gonna try and chip him and then ends up chipping him going for that toe poke probably not the right shot selection on that one Tsutsi a third minute goal to open things up for this squad. Looked like he had an opening there, maybe worried about the speed of the back line. A chance now for Seattle back the other way. Gonzalez Talk home. about speed and just a little bit too far for Marlon Vargas. What an opportunity though for this Seattle team. Excellent awareness from Gonzalez to see Vargas open. The execution wasn't perfect, but to have his head up and not get so excited that he's gonna try and shoot it from that angle and to lay the ball off. Impressive, you would expect the execution to be a little better, but that's something they'll improve at age. To be 16 and have that awareness and the composure from that moment. This game really opening up now. Nakamura getting caught in the corner and cleared away just by our heads. As Bobby Warshaw tries to get a touch on the ball, but as a metaphor for life, it's just a little bit outside his grasp right now. I, Bobby, heard, I heard that and it hurt. Bobby really appreciated that one. Drought comes away with it into the feet of Atencio. Bobby, if you're Matsumoto Yamaga, 
you see that. You get one chance going forward, and immediately the Sounders counter in Gonzalez's speed. That's got to make these players think because they opened up for a half second, and Gonzalez goes on a 50-yard run. Absolutely, which is why they've been so compact in the first half. But as we get to later in the second half, this is a situation that Matsumoto wanted. They wanted to stay within one goal to a later part of the game because then anything can happen. So this is all part of their game plan. This is not phasing Matsumoto right now. This is the kind of game they expected, and they're perfectly fine to play. As we mentioned, an age range for these two teams. As Vargas gets into a good spot here, he takes an early shot, and it flashes across the goal and out. Lovely pass from Atencio, though, outside of the foot, bending just into the path of Vargas. Atencio, I think you could say, a consistent, quiet game to start. He and Kingston really starting to find their feet here in the final 20 or so minutes of this opening half. And the question with both of those players was did they go sideways too often? Did they have the ability to pick up their head and break the lines and do more than play the conservative passes? And we could have a conversation on the value of conservative passes. I knew you were about to say, because why should they? Because I'm okay with that. But ultimately, they've really proven doubters wrong because both of them have broken the lines well. We just saw Tentu with that gorgeous through ball. They've shown that they have more range to their game than some previously thought. You can hear the winds through our mics about 64 degrees here at Toyota Soccer Center in Frisco, Texas. Rain clouds rolling in, although we do not expect any rain. We'll see how lucky we are. This, the final game of the first half of the first day. This, the premier division competition, the secondary competition here at the Generation Adidas Cup. This, the last game of the group stage day one. We'll have the champions division coming for you later on this afternoon. That one gets started with Paranaense versus NYCFC, which will be one of the best games of this competition. Paranaense, a famous club out of Curitiba, Brazil, and NYCFC early on one of the best academy systems in the United States. They won this Premier Division last year. That was a stepping stone for a young group, a lot of which have returned this year. The layoff now, cut inside from Vargas, a chance to shoot, and a third goal. That was one of the best goals I've seen scored at any level. How many passes did Seattle connect from back to front, and even minute or two minutes before they scored that goal, they were at the top of the box, touching and flicking the ball under control to each other. They pull it out, they pull the opponent out of the danger zones and they go right back in. Another key moment of creativity and flair and then a composed finish. David, what a fantastic goal and you will not see one that nice at any level very often. So the final touch, Daniel Robles, USU 15 international playing as the number 10. He is able to finish off Vargas's assist as this Seattle team now three goals here in a span of 18 minutes to come back from one goal down to make it 3-1 here as we enter halftime. Bobby, take me into that Matsumoto Yam y Yamaga halftime huddle. They're going to be positive ultimately. They're disappointed obviously, but the coach needs to keep it upbeat. He needs to keep it positive and say, hey, we just got, or got scored on by a great goal. It happens. Our game plan was to make them work for it. We were going to stay compact. They did work for it. Good for them if they scored such a great goal, but we can go do the same. We still have a chance in this. The second half, we can score two goals. The Seattle Sounders U-17s with a couple pro players out there, and they are showing why. Azriel Gonzalez with the first goal off an assist by Vargas. Ray Serrano with the second off assist by Blake Malone, and then to finish it off, Daniel Robles. A gorgeous goal created by the Sounders. The assists once again to Marlon Vargas. We'll be back in just a moment with all your second half action here on the MLS YouTube channel.
Welcome back to Field 4 at the Toyota Soccer Center for Day 1 competition of the 2018 generation Adidas Cup. David Goss and a former FC Dallas great Bobby Warshaw back on his old stomping grounds enjoying what's been a great day of soccer so far. Here, the premier youth competition in North America. The Seattle Sounders here facing off against Japanese opposition. Matsumoto Yamaga FC out of Nagano, Japan. It was an eventful first half. A goal three minutes in for this Matsumoto squad and then the Seattle Sounders. Two goals in one minute. And then closing out in the 36th minute with an extra capper leading 3-1 here to start the second half of play. Bobby, you look at these two teams now. They've gotten to a feel for each other a little bit. What's the key here in this opening big five minutes? It'll be interesting to see how Seattle decides to approach this. Do they say that we need to really keep the keep our foot down and try and get another goal, keep the pressure high? Or do they go a little more conservative and drop deeper and not try and possess around their own 18? It appears that the Japanese side is going to go direct just off that first one. Which will already change the game plan if they open themselves up, try and pressure a little higher, which we appear to see here with two up top, which is an adjustment from the first half. So the two teams allowed five substitutions to try and change things up here in the second half for these coaching staffs. You can see for this Seattle team a dangerous, effective first half and now they've got the win to their backs here in the second half which we've seen be a big advantage for teams out here at Toyota Soccer Center where the wind blows through. Is it Texas wind? What do you call it? I don't know but that throwing did not go very far because of this wind. Robles here who had the second goal lays it in for Gonzalez. Gonzalez trying to find space to cross and it's blocked well defended in the end by Mashima. And David that started here we've talked about the press a few times with Seattle locking them in on the throw and bringing numbers over, not letting him get out, winning the ball back. Is once you win the ball back, you're already here. You don't have that tough of a job. So it's really nice to see Seattle commit so many numbers on that throw into locking them in. It'll be Robles to take. He scored that final goal of the first half. He clips it into the top of the six. It's punched away by Muto. And Seattle ran the same set piece play that they almost scored on. The ball is cleared off the line in the first half. Top with a D, two on either side. It appears they're starting the same here. Malone, one of the two on the strong side at the D. Atencio on the weak side on the D. Serrano around the goalie, making sure that the goalie does not get an easy step out to take the ball out of the air. Look for Malone to go right at the penalty spot and go right back near. Well, Atencio goes far post for this whip ball in. Corner played in. Malone rises up and just past the far post. They've had success on the play three times now, so it's no surprise to see them go back to it. And off this goal kick, we see Seattle David staying high. We see Gonzalez, Vargas, Robles not allowing Masamoto to play out, making them play it long. For the most part, the Sounders have made sure that this game is played on their terms. Seattle Sounders conceding three minutes in, and then Bobby dominated possession in the first half. Matsumoto didn't really push numbers past midfield at any point. Now they've got the wind against them. If you're Seattle, how do you continue to move downhill to continue to attack? The best part about them dominating possession in the first half, David, wasn't necessarily that they got opportunities to their possession right on that initial play. The opportunities came two or three possessions down the line because of what the possession set up, be it counter-pressing opportunities, be it set-piece opportunities, which is really what you like to see. A lot of times teams use possession to no purpose just because they don't have any other ideas. But clearly the Seattle team has an idea of how they want to play and what they want to accomplish through their possession. So I would expect them to play the same. They'll try and keep the ball. They'll try and get touches, but largely so they can open up these long diagonals, largely so they can open up their ability on counterattacking opportunities. The Seattle Sounders squad considered one of the favorites in the Premier Division. Lovely flick by Robles. Gonzalez trying to find his teammate again, but Muto out to take it. 
Seattle getting to the zone, huh? You can see their confidence building throughout this game. The flicks are coming out, the little touches. It's fun to watch this front line of three or four players because they seem to have similar soccer brands. Uh, they seem, like you said, they all want a nice quick flick, the ball movement, and we saw it on that third goal, how much they fit together as a unit and so far really playing well here against... Yeah, and this is something we talk about often on MLSsoccer.com is in your attacking four, do you want similar players or you do you want diversity? And I'm a big believer is that you want four players who see the game the same way. Do they want to connect? Do they want to... Gonzalez curls that one from the top of the box and Dude. puts his hand out as if what do you expect? Azriel Gonzalez, his second goal of the game. The young Seattle Sounders phenom makes it 4-1. Do you just want to score bangers from 20 yards out to the top corner? Apparently. Apparently that's just the way Seattle likes to roll. We talked about playing with confidence right now for this Sounder squad. Gonzalez gets a little bit of space, about 25 yards from goal, and picks his corner. But David, going back to it, when you talk about four players who like to play the same way, this combination, keeping the ball in tight areas, moving off of each other. If you have the diversity that they also have with the pace from Vargas, with the pace and creativity from Serrano, with the finisher like Gonzalez who can do this and score from long range shots and pull defenses out. So it's that they all see the game and play together the same way, but within their styles and within that framework, they offer variety and that's what you want from your attacking core. And that's why this group is so dangerous. Robles pushes it wide to Montana. Montana now with two defenders closing on him able to find the feet of Atencio. I like Atencio checking his shoulders before he got the ball. Montana now with the low cross. Cleared away by the center back, Yamazaki. Well done by Atencio. Just going for the body and ushering the ball out of bounds. So two substitutions now coming for Masamoto. It looks like going off here. We've got two attacking players in Nakamura and Honda going off. So both the wingers, their afternoon is done. And then coming on for this squad, bringing a little bit more size, you can tell early on, to the field. Dude, it looks like the Sounders are going to make substitutions too. And they have a day off in between the next game and then a day off. So three games in five days, just in the group phase. So it's something for the management of the Sounders to consider on whether they keep the players out, they keep them getting more confidence, scoring more goals, and or seeing the game out, or whether they rest them for a game 48 hours later. So it looks like the two substitutions are Yusei Suzuki and Saito for this Masamoto team. And we'll see if they can find a little bit more danger this team now needs goals early on. Bobby, you were a little bit flippant when someone mentioned not trying to push these guys too hard three games in just this span of days, and then you hope a semifinal or a final. You know, because back in the good old days when you walked uphill both ways to get to the game, you used to play in what, 2007. Six, <laughs> six in a day? Yeah, and there was a question on whether the players can deal with it. And my answer was these are 16 year old kids. They're playing 70 minutes, which is basically a training session. If your kids can't physically deal with these games this week, then maybe you're not training hard enough. But to which the coach said, and he's exactly right, it's not the physical part of it, it's the mental part. And that the kids' bodies can play these potentially five games, six games in seven days, but it's getting their minds ready to do it every single day. Can they be focused? Can they be intense? Can they feel bring the passion so often in such a short time span? Which is true. It's true at the professional level as well. So here are the two subs going off is Peter Kingston as well as Marlon Vargas. Bobby, coming into this one, someone mentioned to us Vargas could be the best or worst player on the field on any given day. I think today it was clearly the best. Yeah, he definitely wasn't the worst player on the field. He showed very well today. It's hard to pick him as the best when Gonzalez scored two goals like that when Serrano has been so good. But yeah, Vargas, the good Vargas definitely showed up today. He created the first goal, slipped the through ball in for Gonzalez, which was a pretty play from him. 
and then created the third goal in the first half as well was the final piece what was one of the prettier goals we'll see in this competition coming on in his place it looks like it's going to be Ethan Dablier Serrano moved to the left side as well traditionally more of a defensive player so this Seattle team with a 4-1 lead an opportunity to try and kind of close things down here they also bring on Soto Kitahara in central midfield in place of Peter Kingston this looks like it'll be a like for like change Kitahara does get a lot of reps in that center midfielder he's someone that could also be considered a starter for the group so not a huge adjustment for the Sounders but a great opportunity for this team Kitahara born in 2003 so playing up a year or two with these players getting an opportunity to come out here at the GA Cup get about 20 minutes under his feet to feel more comfortable going forward these two teams in Group A alongside the New England Revolution and Columbus Crew SC. Columbus knocking off New England 1-0 to start their campaign. So most likely Seattle and Columbus will sit on top of the group. Seattle, if they can, hold on to this goal differential of a nice little lead there. In Group B play, Montreal beat Colorado 2-1. Philadelphia Union and Club Tijuana Cholos, the other two teams in that group, but because of conditions in the Northeast, Philadelphia Union and New York Red Bulls weren't able to get down here in time. So we'll see the Union play later on tonight to make that game up, and the Red Bulls will actually be out here tomorrow night for their matchup. San Jose beating Chicago 1-0 to open up Group C play. And in Group D, Monterey, the early leaders. A 3-1 win against Houston in our first broadcast of the week. Orlando beating RSL 1-0. A bit of a surprise result there to keep pace with Monterey in Group D. Well done by Kitahara. That's a second or third. Nice combination over on this side. Substitute Kitahara, as we said. Was coming off the bench, playing up in age. The ball flicked onto Dablier here. Montagna has had a strong game, both closing out pressing pockets and connecting passes. Sekajima eventually gets the call in his favor. Seattle now leading four to one. We've seen them possess the ball in midfield and around the back. We've seen them be dangerous in one-on-one -on -one opportunities. We've seen them play some good cross-field balls to open up play as well. Showing why a lot of people pick this team as one of the favorites in this division. We've got three more broadcasts coming up for you. NYCFC will take on Atletico Paranaense. CFC, one of the best young midfields, one of the best styles in the MLS Academy setup. Let a couple coming out of Brazil, considered a trendsetter in academies. Good flick on here from Gonzalez. Dablier lets it fall for his right foot, cuts back into his left foot, and curls a shot just wide of the far post. Ariel Gonzalez with the flick on that fell perfectly for Dablier. Took a good moment of calm there to let the defense go by him, cut back, and just couldn't get enough curl on that shot to tuck it inside the far post. So it looks like Masamoto is making another substitution. Coming off here is Daiki Higuchi. Let's see who comes on in his place. It looks like Rai Sato is the substitute. Sato now the sub coming forward. A 
chance now to get the shot away. Dipping just over the crossbar. Bobby, the first shot of the second half for Masamoto. Struggled to get any little bit of the ball. A good burst there from the substitute in Sato down this left wing to open up the play. And one thing you do learn when you play the Japanese teams, I did it at their age, is that they're going to keep fighting until the end. It's part of Japanese culture, it's part of Japanese football, that even though they're down right now, even though the game appears to be over, that these guys are going to keep competing and they're going to keep on playing until that final whistle. And if the Sounders really take their foot off the pedal, if they start to lose focus, they will get punished by Matsumoto. So it looks like Daniel Robles and Ray Serrano are going to come off. Robles with a goal in this one, Serrano as well. Seattle now shifting things around a bit. They push Gonzalez out to the left wing. Seattle now has made four substitutions in this one. Each team allowed five changes to allow these players to get as many minutes as possible. Fantastic pass. Be interested to see. Can he keep his composure and pick out a ball here? Davalier, we just saw with that shot. He didn't execute, David, but he had his head up. He went through the options. That's what you want to see. That's more important than execution at this point is how he read that moment. So it looks like Daniel Leva coming on in midfield in place of Robles. Leva, some experience with the U.S. Youth National Teams. And his pass, Robles, that experience as well. Atencio right here was with the USU 17s just last month. One of the most highly touted players in the region. Fantastic interchange from the Sounders there. Playing on the move. Drought getting forward. He's had a good game from left back. This is the first time he's really gotten to the opposition's 18. But a, a very nicely worked opportunity from the Sounders. They're starting their own half. It appears the Sounders are going to run the same play that they ran the last time. Players at the top of the box on the D, two on either side. Malone on the ball side, runs in, goes back towards the near post. And this time just didn't quite work out. It was Lavia with the service after coming on in place of Serrano. Another key counter-pressing moment from the Sounders. David, we've talked a lot about how good they've been on the ball. But really, the strength of their game today has been just like this. As soon as they lose it, as soon as Matsumoto thinks they can break out or they've regained possession, the Sounders are right back on top of them. They really, we've talked about Matsumoto not having much of the ball, but a ton of the credit has to go to the Sounders for working so hard defensively, reacting so quickly, and being on top of their de defensive pressure scheme. Sato on the ball once again. Cross chipped in by Mashima. And now Seattle looking to counter back the other way. Atencio on the field. He's only got one option in front of him to substitute Diaz. Diaz with the, did not have great movement there. He kept running straight. He had to hold his run. He needed to peel and help Atencio out a little more. So it looks like Ezreal Gonzalez is going to slide out wide for the rest of his time in this game. Bobby, what do you make of him as a center forward? Because we've heard about his versatility. We mentioned Chavez, one of their leading goal scorers, not here because of health problems. So Gonzalez playing that center forward role. Yeah, and we just talked about the movement that didn't work out in the last play. But remember that first goal. When Seattle needed a goal, this game could have gone two different ways. Gonzalez showed up with excellent movement, with excellent striker's instinct. So it might not be his natural position, but he absolutely showed today that he understands the role and he understands the smaller parts of playing the striker position well. Do you think that there is a problem in U.S. soccer, or do you think there's a change in the game that you see maybe less large target forwards and more small mobile forwards that like to play out wide, like to connect, drop deep a little bit more, and pick their head up and run at goal? Well, the game has changed a little bit in the fact that, especially with the 4-2-3-1, everyone's making the middle so compact. So you've got your two center backs. Now you also have two de defensive mids right in front of them, which just makes it tougher to get crosses into, into good air. You can get the crosses off, but you now have more bodies in there. 
So instead of having just a stationary striker in there us to win those headers, if you can have a more mobile player who can draw the center backs out, who can draw the defensive midfielders out, then that's the strategy a lot of teams are going with, which explains why you tend to see less target forwards and more players like Gonzalez who are more runners and, and slashers. I'd say a lot of the players now that would have played maybe number 10s when you were here 10 yep. years ago or 12 years ago or however old you might be, now they're playing as quote-unquote number nines playing in that center forward role. Exactly. The other part of it too is that as we've mentioned so many times and Seattle has done so well, the ability to press as soon as you lose the ball. So to have a more mobile player in that position instead of a big target man, a, a faster, quicker player who can press well is the other important component. Unless you can do both, like, I don't know, Zlatan Ibrahimovic or someone like that. Oh, yeah. That guy's athletic. But What do you think he's doing large. these days? Like, what do you think he's up to? Probably laying on a beach somewhere. Just laying on a beach, yeah. hanging out? Just doing his thing. Do you think it's Hermosa Beach or <laughs> Manhattan Beach? I don't know. He's going to get the big mansion in Hollywood, as, of course, we are alluding to. Lovely. Great run down the wing. No final product there. But Kitahara, run, yeah. fantastic. Defensive mid pulling out the step overs. Masamoto, Yamaga now forced to attack a little bit to try and get back into this one. David, this game is effectively over, and yet it's a big moment for these Sounders players because at this point you think to yourself, do I need to keep fighting? Do I need competing? And I'll tell you what, when you turn professional, you ask yourself that every single day. You say, do I have to do this today? Can I get myself up for it? And it's these moments of training in a game like this on a windy day in Dallas when you're up 4-1 to one and you're going to win that you have to force yourself to keep fighting as hard as you can, to keep focused at 100%. Because that's what you need to do as you become a professional. You're going to ask yourself, can I do this every day? And you'll remember this day when you were 16, 17, and you developed your training in that element. So Connor Drought coming off. The last substitute for Seattle, I think you can say, Bobby, a really good performance from him. He, along with Malone in that first half down the left side, brought Seattle back into the game, helped them create their goal-scoring opportunities. They absolutely did. Both Drought and Montagna, strong performances on the side, both defensively and attacking. The substitute, the last substitute coming on, Sunato for Masamoto here as center forward, putting a little bit of pressure on. Both these teams now have used their allotment of subs. Of course, these games, only 70 minutes of action as we approach the 57th minute here at Toyota Soccer Center. The final 12 minutes or so of the Premier Division day one coverage. We've got the Champions Division coming for you just after lunch, so no need to go anywhere. David, what do you think about Atencio's movement and body type for a player in that position? I, when you step out here on the field, we heard about him. We talked about him a lot. You step out there on the field, it wasn't what I expected to see. Uh, a big hulking player. I think he's moved well mobily. He's been quiet, and that's not a negative for a guy that plays in his position. I thought in the first half, Hinks, Kingston shared well. Uh, they both would drop deep to help pick up the ball. They both would step a little bit higher to move pieces around. But when you have that attacking four in front of you and you're watching them be effective, why do more than you have to, right? Yeah, I'm with you. He's The quietness has been a good element. I do wonder, in the same way that we talked about the changing body type of center forwards, I wonder if it's the same about defensive midfielders right now. You know, I worry about a guy like Atencio getting to MLS and having to pick up Mauro Diaz running off his shoulders, pick up. Does a player like that end up as a center back? Is that what you're saying? That's the I, idea? Because we've heard a lot of coaches here say, oh, we struggle for center backs. This guy's a number six, but we slid him back because we had Right, because he has a body type. He's already a good passer from being a center mid. Right. I don't have a great answer, David, but I, under, I can appreciate that that's what the staff of these MLS clubs will have to think about as they bring these players through the ranks. Now... It's also the change in center backs, the need to be able to pass. You now, a lot of teams, either start the attack off the foot of the center back or their number six drops in between and has to start play. Exactly, which Atencio has done a lot today. Both him and Kingston would drop in between the center backs and get the ball and essentially play from that third center back position. Montana there with a little bit of the professional foul. 
after he turned that ball over trying to slow play. Love a good professional foul. Even for amateurs, of course. Well, a few of these players on pro contracts. The big names, of course, Ezreal Gonzalez, Ray Serrano coming in to this one. I think now we're about three and a half games into coverage here. We've watched all the players out here. I'd argue that those two are as good as any players we've seen on the field, maybe alongside the attackers from Monterey. Palomino showed well at times for Houston, but yes, in the three or four games we've taken in so far on day one, those four for Seattle look pretty good. You can see the red jerseys in the background as Atletico Paranaense is over to watch this game. They are getting ready to face off against NYCFC. These international teams take this tournament very seriously. Not a lot of opportunities for them to travel internationally to play against other countries and then of course a chance to play against MLS but if you're a Brazilian team and you show up at a tournament and River Plate's in the same bracket as you you're always ready to go and those types of teams I track Frankfurt here Independiente de Valle who had that incredible Copa Libertadores run just a year ago here at this competition a lot of different names different variety to the styles that these teams play which for me is the most fun part it's, watching it's, this all. it's exciting for all these DA, Development Academy, and MLS clubs to get an opportunity to play somebody new. Right. You know, so often the Sounders play Portland and they play Crossfire. So you get a chance to play Masamoto today and to get to play a Monterey is just exciting for them. It's a nice way to get away from the routine. Diaz gets to the end line, looking to cut it back for Leva. Not quite able to find the mark there. A free kick now going in favor of the Sounders. As I mentioned, Seattle just missing out by a point of getting in the Champions Division. Their best finish ever at this competition, eighth place last year. There's a lot more expectation, Bobby, for this team. That's what you want to see from a club, right? Year after year. Their academy growth, both in the quality of the teams, but also the quality of the players they produce. It's generally the goal. <laughs> Get better every year. Leva will float this one in. I was wondering if he was going to shoot that for a second. He lined up as if he was going to have a goal, goal with the wind. 40 yards out, the wind gusting behind you, as you can hear. Just on time, we are a few steps away from Toyota Stadium, where FC Dallas and the Portland Timbers will face off. Tomorrow, David, I gave you a tongue-in-cheek answer when you brought up the development of the Sounders Academy. And it's also I didn't ask a question, by the way. I was just making a comment. No, you totally were. <laughs> but it's interesting, too, with a club like Sounders who can invest money in their first team. They are a team that can go out and buy and spend money on the talent. So it is nice to see a club like that making the investment, both financially, but also just in their, their own human resources around the club to try and make them better. So it's not all at all a given a club like the Sounders would improve their economy year in and year out. And yet here they are trying to build their club from within the Seattle area. Which is why Garth Lagaway is so important to that team. Not just because of the first team. You need someone who's not in training every day that's thinking about these bigger picture things. And obviously the best team in Major League Soccer is Toronto FC. They use academy players. They use players they got in dispersal drafts, MLS Super Draft, as well as big time international signings. The layoff from Leva there. And then the ball. The Seattle team has just been so sharp today, so good, both in their ideas, their composure, and at the right moments, their execution. Now, you mentioned sometimes you play possession for confidence. They've gotten a lot of touches. They've gotten a lot of space. So yeah. They are feeling good right now, it seems like, across the board. Atencio looking for the long ball, but the wind pulls it just a little bit too far. David, I'm such a big believer in that, and that sometimes coaches or audience will look at a pass and say, why are you making this two-yard pass? You know what, coach? Because it makes me feel good. It makes me happy to touch a soccer ball, and the more I can touch a soccer ball, the better I can feel, the more likely I am to curl a ball far post when that moment comes to it. So right. yeah, Seattle didn't get any direct opportunities from those possessions, but here we are, and we look how sharp they are, and those two are absolutely correlated. Leva not able to get that one under control. The pass coming from Christian Kuntz, who I mentioned played seven games last year. All starts for Sounders 2 in USL at left back. You can play left back and center back. But Bobby, to bring a player off the bench at a U-17 tournament who has seven pro games under his belt shows you the quality in this team. It also shows the changing nature of American soccer. Yeah. 
I mean, could we have imagined that 10 years ago? Absolutely not. Diaz now battling. Diaz coming off the bench into that center forward role, has put in some good work. And you know what I like about Diaz? He does have the professional games under his belt. He does have the national team experience. And here he comes off the bench in a 4-1 to one game, and he's still competing. He still cares. It's really nice to see that kind of edge and competitiveness from, from a kid to come in here and still compete in this moment. Long shot there. It basically feels like Malone's done everything yeah. but score himself. I mean, just hit the target, Malone, right? I mean, just hit the goal. Just, you know, top of the box. Yeah. Volley. Just take that sidewinder volley and hit the top corner. That was not very mailman-like of him. Did I, did I have to make a Carl Malone reference? Was that a necessity? No, but you always should when you can. Seeing if I was wearing my John Stark socks on this one. You can hear the wind really whipping from one side to the other. And we've seen most games that the, the direction the wind comes in is the team that dominates. But that wasn't the case here in the first half. You're about to get me into a philosophical conversation about whether wind helps you in, in which direction. Because I would argue with the way the Sounders were playing, trying to play those through balls in behind and trying to play the, the runners into the gaps behind the defenders, it actually helps to be against the wind because the ball holds it up. If you go with the wind, it's nearly impossible to measure that pass because it keeps on running. So if we look at that through ball to Gonzalez that scored the first goal, that little layoff, that might not have been a goal with the wind. It, so I'm, Now, in what you're saying, the way Masumoto handled that first half goes into that conversation because they sat deep. Right, If they push higher and you're playing in the Seattle half and Seattle's struggling just to clear the ball, it changes whatever the game plan is and it changes the way that you play with that. Yeah, I'm with you. Perhaps in the defensive end it hurts to be against the wind, which is why I do agree. If you're playing with the wind, more so if you're playing against a team against the wind, you should press. You should make it hard on them to get the ball out. Because at the end of the day, a team's going to try and play, but at some point if they can't play, they're going to try and play the channel, and if they can't play the channel, then they've got nothing. So yeah, Matsumoto probably missed an opportunity there. I don't blame them for sitting, you know, sitting deep. Right, and, you come into a tournament, yeah. you've not played these types of teams. The, also, you get an early lead. Yep. Diaz now chasing this one to the corner. Do something cool. He's got a little bit of time. Okay, I'm okay with a nice... Look at that! Keeping it simple in that moment. Kitahara. Now to Leva. Montana now a chance to push forward again. He gets to the end line, plenty of time, still alive in the box, and finally swept away by Matsuzaki. Saddle needed a near post run there and didn't get it. They can never clear out space for anybody else. Asensio. Through ball once again for Montana. The right back has had a lot of fun in this game, pushing forward, basically playing as a right winger. Tencio, Bobby, one of the things I've liked about his game, though, is he's not changed his pace or reaction for the entire 70 minutes. He seems to know his game and feel comfortable allowing the game to speed up or slow down around him and cons be consistent, which is good to see in that holding midfield role. Totally, David. And what you're saying right now is higher-level stuff. The ability to read the game and both dictate the game's pace through what you're doing and change your pace based on what the game is doing is really impressive and something you don't usually see from a 17-year-old. Approaching the 68th minute here, it was a third-minute goal from Tatsui for this Matsumoto team. Seattle Sounders got under control after that. They rebounded with two goals in a minute. It was a goal from Azriel Gonzalez off the assist from Marlon Vargas, and then one minute later, Ray Serrano with his opening goal of the competition off the header by Malone. To close out the first half, Robles scored a goal. A beautiful buildup finished off Vargas to Robles for Vargas' second assist of the first half. And then Seattle came out and Azriel Gonzalez scored, I guess, what you can only describe as a banger from about 30 yards out here, stuck into the corner to make it 4-1. Diaz now on the run. He's got a teammate in the middle. If he can get the crossway, big block made in the end by Yamzaki. And then a finish. Coming forward is Daniel Leva. He's able to follow up the play 
and put that ball in the back of the net here in the 69th. And so many players, David, would have stayed back thinking that their players were their teammates were going to take advantage of it, thinking that they could take it easy up 4-1 and their player their teammates would score. But not Leva. He follows up the play. He has the instinct that he wants a goal in this match. He's not happy unless he can get on the score sheet. And that's what he does by following up the play and staying focused when so many other guys would have taken it easy there. And Alec Diaz, a rough start when he first came out there getting comfortable, but he has been a presence since he's been on the field at center forward. He absolutely has. As we said, we, we talked about his movement early on, but these last couple, he's gotten into good spots, he's picked up his head, and he's found the right play. So from a pure competition point of view, Seattle Sounders, both goal differential and goal scored, is going to be robust after this one. They've got New England Revolution and Columbus Crew SC to come after this game. As Bobby mentioned, they'll have an off day tomorrow. Both teams here will return on Sunday to play out here at Toyota Soccer Center for this Masamoto team. It'll be against Crew SC as Diaz now is in one-on-one. -on -one. He puts it off the post and follows it up to score. Alec Diaz gets the individual reward for all the work he's done and makes it 6-1 to one here in the last moments. That's what you want to see from a center striker, taking advantage of the opposition's mistakes and then staying composed in front of goal. It seems easy to run at a goalkeeper 1v1 like that, and certainly you should finish, but he just looked so comfortable in that moment, picking up his tent, reading where the goalkeeper was, and not panicking. We've seen from his 45 minutes on the field that he is a capable striker. And that'll be all she wrote in this one. The Seattle Sounders, they start off giving up a third minute goal and they rebound with six unanswered to close out here, to close out the day of Premier Division play. Bobby, your big takeaway so far from today. Just how good the Sounders have been. But not just how that they've played well, David, their ability to adjust after that first goal, to keep their mentality, to keep their game plan, to solve the problems that were right in front of them. We knew that the Sounders had good players. We didn't know that they would have this mentality and this approach, and that's what's been most impressive. Malone, having that one away, he was a big part of their first half turnaround. Of course, this isn't the end of your day. Coming up at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, we've got Atletico Paranaense facing off against NYCFC, last year's Premier Division champion, which the Seattle Sounders look to be on their way to matching here in 2018. That's followed up at 5.45 Eastern time, Independiente de Valle facing off against Atlanta United in their second year in GA Cup competition, bringing pro, pro players like George Bello down here to try and put another trophy into that Youth Academy's trophy case. And then the final game of the day, 7.15 p.m. Eastern time, here on field for the big one, Sporting KC with Gianluco Busso facing off against the Spanish Giants in Real Madrid. Well, it was a good afternoon for the Sounders. They are attacking front four to start out the game in Vargas, Gonzalez, Robles, and Serrano. They all finish with at least a goal or an assist. Leva comes off the bench with one. Alex Diaz as well, Bobby. And the Seattle Sounders right now looking like favorites in the Premier Division. Thanks so much for joining us. For myself, David Goss, and Bobby Warshaw. And everyone here, stick to MLSsoccer.com. We'll be back in just a few. All your Champions Division action here from day one of the 2018 Generation Adidas Cup.